Hello everyone, good afternoon, and welcome to this webinar. Thank you very much for joining. Uh, I know it's uh, a very interesting topic for us in the HR community, and especially for us who are invested in uh, learning and development and uh, facing the daily question of how we can calculate the benefits on uh, training activities. And although sometimes this is a uh, like a hurtful question because we know and we truly believe inside that it's very helpful. However, we always need to uh, prove this for uh, upper management to further build our case and to uh, create a learning organization that truly believes in employee development. So hence, uh, this is uh, today a working session. So I encourage you to have uh, a paper and pen next to you where we are going to do some uh, math, some calculation. You can use your calculators, that's for sure. But it's very important for us to understand the background, which is a human resources background and L&D background behind all the math that uh, we are going to do. So welcome again to this webinar, Return on Soft Skills Training, a working session offered by Merck Training and Consulting. Thank you again for uh, joining. A quick introduction about the company for those of you who uh, don't know it, although I know that we have uh, many loyal webinar attendees who attended this uh, introduction before but since this is a recorded session and it's going to be online uh, anybody can uh, can attend it later on and that's why hence the uh, the importance of the introduction in uh, for that reason so mer training and consulting is a company that has been established in uh, 1958 that was in Beirut 64 years ago. And then it moved uh, headquarters to uh, Dubai, to the United Arab Emirates in 1991. And uh, in 2014, we had another milestone of offering specialty trainings through our uh, PLUS specialty training division. And uh, in 2018, we celebrated the 60 years milestones. We uh, launched our virtual learning solutions in uh, 2019. And as of 2021, we started delivering a blended kind of training solutions, which we like to call integrated virtual learning solutions, where you can attend a, uh, a public course or an in-house course with Merck, either uh, in class, wherever it is happening around the world, maybe it's in Dubai, in Egypt, in Saudi Arabia, in Europe, in, uh, in Asia, in Africa. And if you choose to attend it from the comfort of your home, then you can join the session through a uh, video conferencing tool. And then you will find out that the room is equipped with cameras, with microphones of very high caliber that will try to simulate your um, your training experience as if you are in uh, in person as well. So that's a little bit of, uh, uh, of background around us. The name stands for Mastery, Excellence, Innovation, Reliability, and Client Centricity. These are the values that motivate us every day towards becoming your most trusted partner and developing excellence for those generations to come for the workforce that we meet with uh, on daily basis. <clears throat> Thank God uh, the company now offers a lot, around 300 plus courses on uh, different topics and our full-time consultants offer these courses within their areas of expertise within the categories that you see in front of you. The webinar that you are attending today and you are uh, uh, really welcome to do that, is part of a human resources and training category and is related to uh, some courses as well that we can explain later if we had the chance. Throughout the years, Merck has developed uh, trust uh, at market level that allowed the company to associate with international bodies that certify most of our courses 
like the uh, ASQ for quality, the uh, CILT for logistics and transport, the CMI for management, and the human, uh, the the Society of Human Resources Management for uh, for HR, and uh, a lot more. So our courses will gain value, and they will add as well value to uh, the participants whom we consider our partners. As of myself, my name is Rabia. A quick introduction. Uh, I'm a learning addict since 2001. I figured out that my mission as a professional should be uh, someone who, shared, who shares knowledge. And uh, that, that was reflected through my experience, whether in teaching in universities, or in corporate functions and learning and development and talent development and in my education as well which was in uh, fir first in education and then in human resources management and uh, training i won't take uh, much longer of your time on the introduction and i would like to start right away with uh, today's topic at any point in time if you feel like uh, you would like to ask any question, please feel free either to open up your microphone or to type it in the chat, and I will make sure that I will cater for your questions as much as I can. So calculating return on investment is a practice that is not exclusive for uh, training and development. In fact, it is for any kind of investment that the company does, whether it is investment in innovation, it's an investment in product development, in marketing, in uh, logistics, in warehousing, or in human resources practices, such as training and development. And as a matter of fact, the formula to calculate the ROI is pretty simple. So think about it uh, for any personal investment that you make. Let's say, for example, you go and buy a uh, hundred gram uh, bar of gold, which costs you uh, nowadays around, uh, let's say $3,000 more or less, all right? And then within the span of a month, the gold price goes up and then its price will become $3,500. So from 3,000 to 3,500, that means that the benefit that you got is $500, right? So that's an addition. So the total benefit of the program, of the, of the investment is $3,500. Now, if you subtract the cost from it, then you will find out that the formula is pretty easy. 500 divided by 3,000 is going to be around 16%. So that's why the ROI or the benefits that you got, you just won 16% on your investment. So that's why it's the formula itself is pretty easy whenever you're dealing with cash or assets that can be liquidated into cash um, pretty easily, like gold, for example. But when it comes to uh, training and development, things become uh, a little bit more, uh, let me, I will not say difficult, but sometimes uh, indirect. And that's why let's start with uh, considering the elements of cost that are involved in uh, any training program that you do. And for any training program that is usually a face-to-face -face program, the components of the cost are pretty much the same. You have the delivery, and by that we mean the price that you pay for the provider, whether this person is a company or a freelancer. And then there is some cost sometimes involved in designing the material. In some cases, the provider will include this within the delivery. In some other cases, it will be separate. Then you will have some cost for printing the training material itself, if you'd like, in terms of activities and exercises, in terms of uh, training booklets, in terms of slide decks, in terms of uh, nameplates, in terms of uh, notebooks and marketing material, all that. And then you will have the venue, 
the logistics in case you will have to uh, make people travel from one place to another to accommodate them in hotels, to pay them per diem, stuff like that. In the same time, there is a cost that is the cost of administration, the cost of making sure that participants receive the invitation, someone who writes the invitation, someone who follows up and who, who is going to attend, who is uh, who attended uh, actually, what was the evaluation, they fill in the happy sheets, they tally it uh, down within the system and all of that. And then we add the uh, cost of salaries because we consider that if you take people out of their uh, job for a day or two, then this is a salary that you're paying for them and it's part of the cost of the training. And in case you are using any kind of platform to support the training, uh, if it is, for example, online, you're paying a Zoom registration. If you have like a success factor or uh, any ERP module that relates to training and development and you're paying subscriptions, then here you go again. So any kind of electronic platform that is supporting your coordination, supporting your data, uh, uh, data collection or supporting your learning itself, then you will have to incorporate. So here we go, since it's a working session, let's take a practical example. And uh, please, ladies and gentlemen, try to do the math with me. I'm gonna go slowly on a, uh, uh, on a cost of a certain training, right? And uh, I'd like you to start calculating the cost with me based on the following uh, assumptions. So that's the training that is offered for 100 participants. And we're considering that those 100 participants are going to uh, receive the training for a group of 20 participants each, right? And then the training program is a two-day program offered face-to-face. -face, and you agreed with the provider that the daily cost is $4,000. So I'll give you a few seconds to try to calculate what would be the total cost for the delivery itself. So how much it would cost to deliver this training. And please feel free to type it in the chat if you figured it out. Any answers so far? Any questions so far? Okay, I'll offer you five more seconds if you would like to share your answers. Excellent. Keep the answer next to you. And then we'll assume that the design cost is zero. Uh -huh. We have an answer. Better is saying $15,050. Uh, Better that's a little bit uh, far away from the uh, correct answer. And I'll give you the answer in a minute, but thank you very much for trying. Then the cost of printing the, uh, the training kit, which is uh, the set of all the material will cost $20 per participant. Then that should be easy. What would be the cost then for printing the material? Again, I'll offer you a few seconds to do that. You need to get more comfortable with numbers, more comfortable with math. All right, better the 400 is for one group, but as you can see, we have 100 participants then it's going to be for five groups and the total number would be five times 400, which is going to be 2000 US dollars. But thank you very much. That was quick. Uh, let's go for the price of the venue. Now, a venue would regularly charge you per person per day. So let's say the hotel offered you $50 per participant per day. 
how much would be uh, the cost of the venue altogether? Again, 30 seconds for you to do that. So it's $50 per participant per day. And we have an answer. Better is saying 5,000. That's uh, 5,000 is for 100 participants, better. That's true. But since the program is two days, then uh, I believe the answer should be uh, 10,000, okay? Which is, uh, which is double, all right? But again, Thank you very much for uh, playing the game with me. I really appreciate it, all right? So another cost is the cost of administration. And we are going to assume that we have a training coordinator who's doing this kind of administration. And in order to uh, do everything for the 100 participants and manage to coordinate the five programs, then it will take this person five days of admin work. And this person is paid $1,500 a month, considering that a month is a 20 working days. How much it is costing us in terms of administration? Uh, Someone is saying 30,000. And as a matter as a matter of fact, I hope coordination will not cost 30,000 because that would be a massive increase to the cost. But let me tell you how to calculate it. It's 20 days for $1,500. This is what we are paying the coordinator for the whole 20 days. Then for five days, what you need to pay is fourth of that, which is around uh, 375. Uh, Lena, you're almost there. You try to divide uh, by four, uh, but 1,500 divided by four is 375. Now, the final piece of calculating the cost is the salaries of participants. And we are going to assume that an average par participant uh, earns $6,000 a month, then how much would be the cost of salaries for people who are leaving their job to attend this training? Again, I'll give you one minute to try to figure it out before I do the math in front of every one of you. But just to make it exciting as well, I'd like everyone to be part of that. This is something that you need to get used to, and you need to make sure that uh, you feel comfortable with. NG, the average salary per month per participant is $6,000. Yes. And the training is two days, correct. Better, uh, I, I know that it's, it goes against our beliefs that we need to calculate the cost of salaries per participant attending the training because attending the training is part of their job. Uh, however, in the business world, they are considered uh, non-productive on these two days. And that's why the best practices is are to calculate the uh, the salary as past a part of the cost. But I totally feel for you, I know that sometimes it doesn't make sense, but that's it. $40,000, uh, Angie, I guess you have the right answer. 400 participants for two days. So if we assume that they are getting $6,000 uh, a month for 20 days, 20 working days, then this is uh, around, $300, uh, $300, right, uh, uh, per day. And then uh, if you are having $300 per day for two days is, uh, no, 
No, no, is uh, uh, Angie, 20 days, not uh, uh, not 30 days, because when you calculate the per diem, it has to go for a working day. It's like the same when you pay for uh, vacation for, for your employees, or when you deduct from the salary, you deduct based on the uh, number of working days. Regardless, if you follow one rule or the other as an HR professional, uh, you can do you can do both of them, and as you said, it might be sixty thousand, it might be forty thousand, but the 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 way you calculate it is sixty thousand divided by twenty is three hundred dollars, and then uh, if that's the daily rate, then three three hundred times two is six hundred per participant, and if you have a hundred participant, that's then this is sixty uh, uh, sixty thousand dollars. So I try to make uh, the calculation as well uh, on uh, on uh, that premise, but for a different uh, kind of salaries. And I will share with you some of the answers. All right, I changed the salary here because uh, of the case study that we are doing later on. So let me do the math with you again. And please, uh, if you have any question again, please let me know. So in case of delivering the program, remember, we are running five sessions to cater for 100 employees and 20 person is attending each session. So five session and each one is two days. So this is two times five, which is 10. And the day is for $4,000. Then the cost of delivery is $40,000. Then the material to be printed out $20 per kit. This is 20 times 100 is $2,000. And then the venue is 50 times two times 100 participants, because as we said, the venue is charging $50 per day per participant. Then this is $10,000. The cost of administration for a person who's spending five days of their time where uh, they get $1,500 in, uh, in uh, uh, monthly salary, is 1500 divided by four, which is 3075. The salaries based on a $150, based on $150 um, uh, daily rate is going to be $30,000 in that case. And I'll explain later on why I changed the numbers. And the platform in that case, since it is a face to face, is zero USD. And then you end up adding all those numbers and you will get somehow around $82,375 in cost of the training itself. So that's the cost of the training, right? Any questions so far? Anything that you would like to get some more insights about? We're good. Okay. So, great, thank you so much. So uh, what I want to tell you is that calculating the cost is uh, a little bit less uh, challenging than calculating the benefits. I'd like to remind you that the formula is cost and benefit. So you need to calculate the benefits of the training and the cost of the uh, training as well. And since the cost is straightforward, just a matter of understanding those components and adding them up, that was pretty easy. But what if the benefit is a little bit more tricky? What if the way to monetize the return is not straightforward? How can I translate people development benefits into money. If I deliver a training for my leaders in the organization on people development, on offering feedback, on setting objectives, on performance management, how can I transform their benefits from the training to money. If I offer a training for my employees on well-being, 
how to take care of their mental health, of their uh, physical health, etc. Uh, how can I do that? So, Angie, you're saying that uh, it would be defined when you propose the module, that's for sure, but how to define it and how to defend it in front of management. And although it's gonna reflect in some qualitative KPIs, but since the ROI formula has numbers and inputs to plug in, they those inputs have to be in uh, in money, okay? So if the benefit is in terms of uh, increased competence, I cannot put increased competence in the formula. The formula is money. So any number that goes there is going to be money. And Angie, as if you're reading the presentation up front, if we are working on well-being, then we are going to reduce the number of sick leaves. And then we cannot input in the formula the number of sick leaves because the formula has to cater only for numbers from the same unit of measurement. And that's why we need to calculate the money saved from the sick leaves that are decreasing. So that's how we try to do the math. And it's not always straightforward. It's sometimes challenging and it needs to make sense for management who uh, do not always see this kind of benefit uh, in a straightforward fashion. So let's say you're doing a training on presentation skills, how this is going to be calculated in terms of money. If you are doing a training on emotional intelligence or on teamwork or in time management, this is not straightforward, but we need to monetize those, especially when the cost of the training is really uh, substantial. So for today, I'm going to take uh, uh, some examples with you. But what I would need to tell you is that companies, as much as they value money, they value things that are uh, close as much to money for them, which is a different currency that can be directly exchanged into money. Like what Angie just said regarding the absenteeism. Money can come in terms of saved time or additional time gained. Money can be in terms of fines that you avoid or quality issues that you resolve. Money can be translated into customer satisfaction that leads to more sales or in turnover that leads to cost of hiring. Or it can uh, be in terms of losses due to safety uh, uh, incidents. Or it can be uh, due to accidents that will cost uh, the company to pay in terms of maintenance or to pay in terms of uh, 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 material or to pay, in, to pay in terms of equipment and all of that, or even to pay in terms of idle time of employees who are waiting for the machine to be fixed in order to, uh, to resume work. So all that makes sense for companies as much as money. So the more we can establish this line of sight between a soft skills training and any benefit in this or that currency from those that you can see in front of you, then we are making more sense and we are increasing our chances for buy-in and endorsement. And as a matter of fact, in terms of uh, ROI or return on investment. So for that, I will take uh, another example with you since we promised that this is going to be a working session. And as uh, NG, uh, could predict that uh, our example is going to be a relationship between well-being and absenteeism, we need to develop uh, a business case in front of management related to well-being and absenteeism. And Angie, I don't know how you figured out that. Honestly, I have no idea, but <laughs> that's okay. That, <laughs> that That's great. So... Uh, 
what we are trying to pitch here for management is a business link between well-being and absenteeism. And although we as HR professionals are really aware about the, uh, the causality between those two uh, factors, however, as you can see, CIPD suggests that the approach to dealing with, with well-being from 61% of the companies is very reactive and they are not trying to resolve those, program, uh, those problems with uh, some thought out uh, plans to ensure well-being of employees. Uh, the CIPD in 2018 reported uh, th through the labor force survey that it's approximately 10 million days of absenteeism were due to stress, anxiety, or depression in the United Kingdom. And those statistics are showing that these figures are getting worse on a year-to-year -year basis. So in other words, there is a, a definite conclusion that says happier staff are less likely to take time off sick. And that's why we thought as a training department to deliver a program for employees on well-being. To pitch that, it's better to pitch it in terms of return on investment. On top of all the benefits, the intangibles that uh, you can present for management, then to like perfectly craft your pitch, it would be a great added value if you can add some money factor involved. So in the research that I have been doing, I saw that in one manufacturing company, they saw 28% decrease in absenteeism after introducing an engagement and well-being program, and that was referenced in the HR magazine. So our case, our business case here from HR perspective is assumed to be the following. Let's say we are experiencing now a, a thousand absenteeism days in the organization, and they came specifically from 100 employees who are showing signs of low, uh, of low well-being practices, okay? We're not gonna offer the program for all the employees in the organization because some people are doing very good and they don't need it. So again, we are uh, pitching this on the premise of uh, need-based training and not company-wide training to make more sense. And you will see that the numbers will not add up even in that case. So we need to make sure that uh, when we do the program, we cater for this, uh, this number that we are going to see. So if we assume, if we assume that we are going to have similar benefits from this program, like the company that, uh, that we have here in the research, then we assume that there should be a decrease of around 30% in the absenteeism days, and that's going to be 700 instead of 1,000 with the impact of the program, which is a saving of 300 absenteeism days. Now, one can come and say, but why would I reflect a case of a manufacturer in UK to my own business. And that would be perfectly legit question, right? Now, if you work in a different environment or in a different country or in a different industry, you need to make sure that you have some kind of benchmark that will help you predict the impact of the training. Because let me ask you one thing. Do you expect that if you give the well-being program for the 100 employees 
who have been showing high level of absenteeism. You will see zero absenteeism from the, their end after the program. What do you think? Absolutely not. It's not gonna be zero because absenteeism is not only related to well-being. Absenteeism can be caused by so many reasons and one of them is well-being. So to be uh, like logical and to appeal for business people, we need to estimate this number, right? And we can estimate this through uh, benchmarking. If you are operating in a market that does a lot of research, a lot of uh, studies, otherwise you can do your own internal research. You can do some statistics. You can gather data internally from the system. You can try to connect the dots, do some data analytics and predict a scientific guess about the impact of well-being on absenteeism. Now, can you do that? And do you have the right to do this kind of prediction? And I will tell you, absolutely. Because all the other departments, marketing, sales, finance, logistics, procurement, warehouse, production, any kind of other department, when they present their budgets for the year, this is what they do. They predict a certain kind of a return on investment based on their expertise and based on previous data. So why not we do it as well in the same fashion, as long as whatever benchmark we are bringing is relevant to our industry, is relevant to our uh, geography, is relevant to the size of the company that we are working with. And if your data is local for you, that's even better, that's more relevant, and that's more convincing. So, ladies and gentlemen, get your paper and pen again next to you. What we are trying to calculate is the well being program impact on lower absenteeism to save the cost of those days. And we are assuming that the average daily cost, daily rate of absent employee is 150 US dollars. This is why it was reflected in the uh, cost calculation uh, before. So as we say that, right, I have 100 employees who are attending this well-being program. 100 employees who are attending this well-being program. What would be the money benefit, the cost saved on absenteeism, if we uh, calculate it based on the 28% benchmark that we have seen in the research? So if we are sure that this well-being program is going to decrease the absenteeism days by 28%. And we had already 1,000 days of absenteeism. What would be the saving in terms of money? How much money we are saving for the company? I'll give you a minute to try to do the math before we resolve it together. So remember, those 100 employees were absent for 1,000 days. So it's 10 days per employee per year. I know it's a little bit big, but just for the sake of making the math easier. Okay. So Angie, you're saying that it is, no, wait. 42 million, that's 
4 million to 200,000, that's too much, okay? So the reduction in the number of days, the reduction in the number of days is 280 days for all the 100 employees, not for one employee, okay? Right? It's it, like 280 days, if they are absent for 280 days, that's the full year, right? If you remove the weekends, So 280, you're, you're not far away, okay? You're not far away. It's a zero far away. In fact, it is 42,000. It's not 420,000, okay? And why is that? Because what we are doing here is, let's say $150, $150 times 280 is, the 42,000. And remember, if you don't have the 28%, then you can uh, then you can benchmark it and calculate it based on your own uh, your own math. Please uh, note the the mistake here. This is 150 and not 200. Just in case uh, you are wondering. So this is 150 US dollar per person. All right. So that's 42,000. Do you remember how much the cost of the training was? So the cost of the training was 82,000, right? 82,000 is much more of the 42,000. So what would that mean? It means that the cost for this program outweighs the benefit. And that's why we need to do one thing of two in that case. You either find another way that will be less costly. Maybe you will try to do the training on premises. So you will save around, um, I guess, $40,000 in terms of venue, okay? Remember, in the cost, I guess we had thirty dollars or $40,000. So one thing you can do is you can do the training on premise, okay? And you can um, slash the, uh, the cost of uh, the venue. Sometimes you can offer it on a uh, half day basis and that that's why you can also not take much time of the uh, employees uh, day and they can still do some work on the same day so you might a little bit justify uh, the cost another thing that you can do and that's what we do usually when we invest is we do not in, we do not calculate the return on investment on one year basis like in that case if we calculate the benefits that we are reaping on four on three year basis so instead of 42 you will get three times 42000 and our final exercise would be now as you know the benefits over three years and you know the cost of the training, which is 82,375 US dollars. Can you please apply the formula that you see in front of you in order to calculate the ROI of, uh, of the training? Again, I'll give you a minute to try to do that. Remember that we are calculating this for on a three-year basis, not on a one-year basis.
roughly 53%. This is what NG is saying, and you are perfectly right. Excellent job. Three times 42,000 is around 126,000. Excellent. We have a 52.9. Excellent job. Very good. And then the cost is there, and all you need to do is to apply the form. And as you can see, it involves a lot of math. There are a lot of mistakes that we can fall into. And especially when the cost is not, uh, when the benefit is not directly related to, uh, to money, then we will have to do some research. We'll have to be, to do some data analytics in order to estimate the benefit and pitch our business case according. I have realized through my uh, years of training and through meeting with a lot of uh, learning and development professionals that this is a common need across. And that's why I developed a, uh, a five-day program that is full of those practical applications. Everything from case studies on, that, uh, pro on those programs that are not obvious to calculate the ROI, from Excel programs to leadership, to emotional intelligence, to presentation skills, to cybersecurity, and all these programs that we do on a yearly basis, but we cannot calculate the training ROI on. I've designed a training program for that end, very practical, very much hands-on, uh, with dynamics very similar to what you experienced in this training. It's running in Dubai by the end of November, from 27th of November to December 1st. So if you would like to join this, please feel free to, uh, uh, to visit the website, know more about it, click on the, uh, on the outline, read it, feel free to get in touch. I'm gonna leave uh, uh, my email address in the chat box as well, in case you would like to, uh, to get in touch and know more about the course. And uh, you can also, as I said in the beginning, attend either on premise, either in person, or you can join uh, through our uh, online technology. And you can also, as a company, benefit if, from the two plus one offer. So you can register three participants on this course while you pay uh, only for two. With this note, I would like to uh, wrap up uh, this webinar. I would like to uh, thank every one of you for, uh, for joining today. I hope you had uh, some insights out of the uh, out of the course, some uh, beneficial ideas. And uh, until we meet again in another webinar, I would like to encourage you to follow us on our social media channels and uh, to get uh, to get more on of these webinars, of these articles that we share. Angie, you have a question. You have a question. Please go ahead. You can use your mic. You can use the chat. No, uh, both are available. Well, uh, there is no currently benchmarks because unfortunately worldwide, and we're talking 2021 statistics, 5% of programs around the world uh, are having their ROIs measured. So that's why there is no benchmark. However, what I can tell you is for any investor, for any investor, a seven or eight percent uh, ROI is a great number, is a very good number. I know you live in Dubai, and if you thought of investing in real estate, then six to seven percent is a great return on investment. So if you can prove 10, 12 percent, that would be marvelous in fact that would be very acceptable for any business person okay thank you so much ladies and gentlemen i wish you a uh, a great afternoon thank you very much for joining and i hope to uh, uh, to see you soon uh, uh, for until that time stay safe Keep on fighting for our learning case and stay, take care. Merck.com